not take this cat home? Well, first, don't tell me what to do, because I will do the opposite. But also, why? Look at it. It's so cute. It's raining. It's in a cardboard box. It needs me. I'm taking it home. You're not having a great day as usual, but we're off to a great start. Oh, great. It's the first time in a while that you felt like going out. <laughs> and of course it's raining, but in the middle of your walk, it starts to rain. Maybe this is just a sign that you should have stayed home today. Don't leave the house. Why would you do that? You turn to head home when... How would I not take this cat? Huh? What was that? There are only a few people around on the street. Makes sense due to the increase of missing persons around the area lately. <laughs> Why are you walking alone in the dark in the rain? <laughs> There's missing persons. It's fine. Nobody wants me. <laughs> My life's a mess. But none of them react to the sound at all. Curiosity guiding your steps, you follow the sound to the entrance of a dark, dingy alleyway. You timidly enter the alley and walk forward. At the end of the alley is a big cardboard box. Oh my god, I'm gonna name him Sprinkles. <laughs> it's an interesting looking cat. Its pretty yellow eyes shine like gold among the dark sea of its black fur. It puts its front paws on the edge of the box and looks up at you like this. So cute! That's what I'm saying. It's just looking at you as if waiting for you to make the next move. <gasps> I mean, the game told me do not take this cat home, so I have to take the cat home. You reach into the box and pick the cat up, holding it out in front of you. Why not? <gasps> oh, I just made a best friend. What's the worst that could happen? You're all alone and well, I'm kind of in the same boat myself, so why not stick together, right? At least for a little while. Oh, it loves me! Let's get you out of the rain, okay? You stop by a small local pet store for some cat food, then head back home. After locking the front door and placing the cat on the floor, you watch for a moment as it curiously explores the new environment. Leaving the feline to its own devices, you set about making the both of you some dinner. You take out the can of cat food and open it with the tab on top. You put some cat food on a saucer and click your tongue to call the cat over to you. It looks at the plate of food and completely ignores it. Not hungry, I guess. I'll just leave it here if you get hungry later, okay? Oh, 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 I can't be mad at you. The cat rubs its body against your leg with a purr. You smile, that's enough of a thanks for you. It follows you into the kitchen as you start on your own dinner. You decide that you have enough ingredients for a sandwich. Hell yeah, bread toasted, yeah, mayo and mustard spread, turkey and cheese and lettuce perfectly placed. It, oh, ow. I cut myself. You wince as you cut your finger on the knife while slicing a tomato. You feel a little embarrassed for such a blunder and sigh, tossing the knife onto the cutting board. You're about to head to the bathroom for a bandage when the cat hops up onto the counter. It sniffs at the knife, meows almost pointedly at you. Hee hee, don't worry, I'm all right. It was just the... the... <laughs> you watch as this cat starts to... Okay. <laughs> Okay, I think I brought home a demon. That's why he's not eating the cat food, because he wants to eat people. Oh, I keep making bad decisions in my life. Starts to lick lightly, but enthusiastically at me on the knife. You're so shocked that by the time you come to your senses, the knife has been completely licked clean. I have to get this thing out of my house. The cat sits back staring at you. You feel a little uneasy. Sure, cats are meat eating predators, but that was a little weird, right? Sure, you're no cat expert, but that was definitely not something an ordinary cat would do, right? I actually don't know. I feel like they would. <laughs> oh, he's so cute though. You could do, he could do whatever he wants. He could eat me alive, I don't care. Well, regardless, you're not about to abandon a cat in need while it's still raining outside. Not after all your efforts. You are going to take it to the shelter tomorrow anyway. What's one night of awkwardness? Weird or not, it's just a cat. The rest of the evening, unfortunately, goes downhill from there. <laughs> Even after covering up your fingers cut with a bandage, the cat keeps trying to lick at the wound. You gently push it away every time, but you're starting to get worried at the strange behavior. What if it's got a taste for blood and thinks you're food now? <laughs> you're not sure what you'll do if it starts to get more aggressive. You keep thinking about the cat food sitting in the corner, untouched. Cat, go eat your food. Go eat your food, freaking cat. Get, no! Get away! <laughs> Ah, oh, come on, enough already. You shove it away a little more forcefully this time out of annoyance. You feel bad immediately, but before you can do anything, the cat meows sharply at you and dashes off around the corner and into the hall. You sigh deeply. At this point, you're just worried that it's going to take a bite out of you in your sleep. Maybe a vet will have an idea of how to calm it down. You can only hope. You don't have many other options left other than tossing the cat out in the rain. After finding the number of a local vet, you pick up your landline and... Cat? Cat? Cat, did you turn off the lights? Hey! The lights just... 
What out? Great, just great. Rain must have knocked out the power. You check your cell phone only to find that it's out of batteries, of course. <laughs> you grab a flashlight and turn it on. It's quiet. It's too quiet. Yeah, where's that, where's that damn cat? Did the rain stop? It's gonna attack me. But then, why did the power go out? You look outside. The sky is pitch black. What time is it? You turn to check the clock. <gasps> okay, it's a demon. It's a demon. Look, look at the clock. It keeps going six, six, six and kill. Cat, buddy, sprinkles. The cat sits on top of your digital clock staring at you. Thinking now, you realize the clock shouldn't be working at all with the power outage, but the numbers are lit up and completely going hay haywire. It's not giving off any indication that it's alive. It's not blinking, it's not breathing, <laughs> but it's eyes. This isn't normal. You're afraid. You want to run, but you're afraid of letting the cat out of your sight. You consider tossing the cat out after all, but as soon as the thought enters your head, you feel a sharp urge to vomit. Oh God, he's mind controlling me now. He's mind controlling me. Those eyes, its eyes hold you still. Even with your flashlight trained on it, its pupils are large, round, inky pits. Cat, stop, please. The flashlight flickers. Oh, oh I'm about to die. <laughs> oh, and the cat is gone. Fear immediately grips your mind. The silence punctuated with the rapid pumping of blood in your heart is overwritten as your ears slowly start to pick up the sound of static all around you. How is the clock working with no power? You back away from the clock and feel as if the air itself coils tightly and abruptly in response, like a predator prepared to pounce, but waiting, waiting for your next move. You're afraid to move. You're afraid to even take a breath. Whatever is watching you, you can already feel its impatience. You don't know how you know this, but you can sense it as clearly as if it had whispered. Cat, why did your hissing sound like let's play? You can't stay here. You have to run. With that thought, a sudden primal instinct awakens within you, making you tear yourself into a nasty burst of movement, of action, but you're still weak from the fear's grip on your mind. Your legs tangle together under you in your haste and you fall to the ground. What happened now? This is the worst day. I just wanted to take a walk in the rain to sulk. A sharp pain explodes in the center of your foot. At first you think you've broken your ankle, but something warm and wet trickles down the length of your foot, pooling underneath it. You hear the sound of metal scraping on tiles after skidding across the floor as if it had been kicked. Oh God, it's the freaking knife again. Winded from your fall, you look up in a daze to see the object glinting and a strange light coming in from outside. The light pouring in from your now open front door. It's your kitchen knife and still tinted red from your earlier blunder, but that's not right. Wasn't it completely licked clean by the... You gulp dryly at the pain in your foot. You barely have time to wonder how the knife ended up on your living room floor to be stepped on instead of resting on your cutting board in the kitchen where you left it. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Okay. The cat is back. It's back. Okay. Well, eat your food. You weird demon cat. Leave me alone. A pair of glowing golden eyes come forward as the cat emerges from the shadows into the light from your doorway. It pads lightly over to the knife as if skipping into light the noises. It bends down to lap at the blood dripping from the blade. Your senses slowly begin to overwhelm you. The chill of the air as it starts to suffocate you under its weight. <gasps> the sound of your shaky breaths discorded against the static now piercing your skull. The dryness of your tongue spreading to your throat. The incomprehensible sight of the stray you'd taken in licking away at your kitchen knife once again completely clean. The scent of blood from the fresh wound on your foot. Blood? It's like I cleaned your knife again. You're so clumsy, owner. Stop being so clumsy. Golden eyes slide up to you as if in response to your sudden realization. You're hurt. Your foot is bleeding. You're bleeding. The cat barely moves, shoulders twitching, as if just considering the act of pouncing forward. But you're already on your feet and out the door. You run or rather limp down the empty street. The sky is black and red, but there's a strange light emitting from nowhere that casts everything else in white. The houses, the trees, the road, even you, everything except your blood. You can just barely glimpse the imprints your injured foot leaves in the in your wake with every impact it makes on the ground. It hurts. It hurts. But you can't stop. You don't stop. Not when the shadows grow around you. Not when you feel the gaze of eyes all over you. Not when the road ahead of you is darkened by a long shadow of something behind you. Even then, you don't stop running because... If that's the cat right there ahead of you, then what in the world is behind you? Oh, uh, I should probably save. 
I want to see. What was it? Huh? Interesting. Oh, very, very interesting. I died? I died! <laughs> Thank God I saved. Keep running. Huh? Interesting. Oh, very, very interesting. What? 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 You're walking. Right, of course. It's the first time. Wait, I'm going. What? Oh, wait. The weather is absolutely perfect today. It's a good sign, right? Maybe your luck is finally starting to turn around. Okay, it's different than the first time, even though I just started over. You tentatively allow yourself to feel excited for the possibilities of where you could go or what you could do. Maybe even who you could meet. You're so deep in thought that you almost miss it. Huh? What was that? Oh my god, are we stuck in a time loop with this frickin' cat demon? <laughs> Curiosity guiding your steps, you follow the sound. Sunlight only just manages to reach down in between the tall buildings on either side. Finally, the sound source comes into view. At the end of the alley in a big cardboard box. The freaking cat again. <laughs> oh, I don't think he opened his mouth last time. So, so, you look so familiar, right? Then again, it is a cat. Not many different ways for a standard black cat to look after all. This one sure is cu a cutie though. It's just sitting there patiently, waiting for you to do something. I, gu I guess I, I guess I haven't learned my lesson and will take you home. Yeah, oh, he looks sad. He's probably like, don't. The whole point of this game is to get you to not take me home and you keep taking me home. That's right, cat, because I don't, I don't listen to what you tell me. Well, why not, right? Oh, he's become more animated. You barely reach out your arms before the cat eagerly leaps into them and climbs up onto your shoulders. It butts its head into your temple, nuzzling against it. Oh, let's get you out of here, yeah? Oh, maybe this time will be better. On the way home, you briefly consider getting cat food, but that would be a waste of time. You shrug at the odd feeling and move on. After locking the front door and placing the cat on the floor, you wait for it to walk away and explore the new environment. But it simply sits and looks at you expectantly. Let's do something with the cat. Like what? Let's pet the cat. You sit on the floor in your living room and click your tongue to call the cat over. Oh, oh, I'm petting the cat. The cat dashes over to you immediately climbing to your lap. Poor thing, you just wanted some attention, don't you? You carefully pet the cat. A rub behind an ear, a scratch under the chin, a smooth sweep, uh, sweep along the back. This is going so much better than the first time. You keep petting the cat in your lap, enjoying the bonding time together. But the cat starts to get restless after a while. Keep petting it. Yeah, I should have known. If a cat doesn't want to be pet, you should uh, stop petting it because it's not going to end well. You're not quite ready to stop. <laughs> I will continue to pet you, cat. You feel so calm. The repetitive actions soothing your <laughs> usually overworking mind. I don't like this music. The cat leans away from your next head pat. It's trying to get out of your lap. I must keep petting the cat. When you scratch under the cat's chin, it bites at your fingers. You might be bleeding, but really, it barely hurts. More of a warning than anything. The cat struggles in your hold. I mean, I love the intense music, but so far, this is just a normal cat interaction. <laughs> keep petting. Keep petting the cat. <laughs> you keep petting the cat. Ow! Stupid cat! <laughs> Did it bite my finger off? <laughs> what happened? The cat bites off your finger! Ah! It hurts! You're definitely bleeding now, but for some reason, you just can't stop. You don't know what it is, I must keep petting the cat. Its fur is so much softer than you realized. You'd think that it would be shining in the faint light of your living room, but it's as if the darkness of the cat's black coat is sucking in all the illumination around it, rendering it completely null. You're drawn to it, like you're somehow holding a deep, dark abyss right in your lap. It seems calmer now, munching on your severed finger. The stump between your- oh god, oh god, you keep petting. I'm missing a finger, but this is so worth it. You fret that your blood will ruin its fur, but the cat no longer seems to mind. I mean, anything for the cat. Time passes, it's dark now. Soft as the fur is, your palm has started to feel raw and damp under the- You think faintly that maybe you've had enough. You start to lift your hand from the cat. What in a flash? It took my hand! <laughs> my hand! Your entire hand is separated. It flops onto your lap beside the cat. You don't feel it for a moment, but your body tenses, anticipating the pain as you blankly watch the cat lick at the palm of your severed hand. Ah, it hurts. <laughs> it really, really hurts. Then 
The cat looks up at you and you, you feel compelled to keep petting. Oh, this is so gross. You're reluctant, but you're also afraid of what would happen if you don't heed the call. What will you lose next if you try to resist again? You were hurt for your insistent petting earlier. Yet now, you've been hurt for trying to stop? It defies all logic, but that's what scares you. You feebly try to raise your uninjured hand to pet the cat, but it stiffens, golden eyes glinting dangerously. Well, all right then. You raise your bleeding stump and resume your- It wants me to pet. It with my stump. Okay. And you bleed. You pet. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Please stop petting. Please stop petting. Pending seven personal boundaries. Yeah, I deserve that. It's fine. It's fine. All right. What can we do this time? Let's clean the cat. That always goes well with cats, right? You've heard that cats can keep themselves clean, but maybe this is one of those times that a little human help couldn't hurt. He's gonna kill me. You head into the bathroom and set things up, trying to remember how to wash a cat. You're definitely no expert, but you think the best way to get a cat clean would be carefully. So you pick the cat up and place it gently in the sink before turning the water on. The cat is startled, but ultimately doesn't try to run away. Nice. All right, there we go, buddy. Oh, he likes it. This is not at all how I thought this would go. You lather your hands with some soap and carefully give the cat a thorough half scrub, half massage. After a few minutes, you rinse the cat completely and gather it up in a blanket, drying it. Then you take a brush and carefully run it through the cat's fur. Oh, the cat seems like it's in heaven as you brush it. Some hairs are sticking to you, but you don't mind. In fact, quite a lot of fur is sticking on you. Is it not a cat? Did it pretend to be a cat? You try to brush it away, but it won't come off. Guess you're up next for a bath. You try to ignore the fur and finish with the cat quickly, but more hair keeps sticking to you, your, uh, your hands, your arms. Before you realize it, they're covered in fur that won't come off. It's thick enough that you try to just yank it off, but ow, what? Pain lances through the spot you tugged at. Upon closer inspection, you see that the hair is growing. I'm becoming a cat, growing out of you. Ah! You can actually feel it now. Fur growing out of your back, your neck, your face, your eye, your eyes, your tongue. Ah! It's even growing inside your throat. Okay, this is gonna be a terrible way to go. As you collapse and start to choke on the thickening fur in your esophagus, the cat leans up to lap at the fur growing on your forehead, grooming your hair as thoroughly as you did it for it earlier. You think it'd be sweet if you weren't currently losing air. Still, feels nice at least to be looked after and cared for, even if it's just for a little while longer. The cat's careful grooming is the last thing you feel before you're no longer able to breathe. Ending 15, self-care buddies. That's cute. What else can we do? Sure, let's feed it. The cat looks hungry, so you decide to feed it. You're regretting not stopping for food earlier as you don't have much left. Grocery shopping day is tomorrow after all. You head to the kitchen and click your tongue, ensuring the cat follows after you. It leaps nimbly onto the kitchen counter and watches as you search for meal options. Hmm, let's see. You find some things you expect. A can of tuna in the pantry, some leftover meatloaf in the fridge, and... What's that? You realize there's a tightly sealed Tupperware on the bottom shelf of the fridge. That can't be good. <laughs> you don't recognize it. A foul odor is leaking from the container. Whatever is inside can't be safe for human consumption. <laughs> um, but the cat seems excited about it, practically salivating over it. Still, you're the caretaker here. You're the one who needs to decide what's best to feed the hungry cat, so you'll feed it. <laughs> I feel like if I give it one of the obvious things, like tuna, it's gonna kill me. So let's do that! Cats like fish, right? Shrugging, you take out the tuna for the cat and the meatloaf for yourself. You put the frankly ominous container back in the fridge. The cat looks a little disappointed. Tough. You'll need to dispose of that weird whatever it is later. You open the tuna and spoon it onto a small saucer. You put the saucer on the kitchen counter next to the cat. Eat up, kitty! As the cat digs into its meal, you go about heating up the meatloaf in the microwave. While setting the time, you hear... Oh. Hmm? You turn and see that the plate is completely empty. Whoa, that was quick. You need to pace yourself. Oh, the cat's hiccuping. Oh, oh, oh. What the? You watch baffled as the cat continues to hiccup, causing little bubbles to float out of its mouth. Okay, that that's okay. You can, you can process this. It's not completely out of the realm of what's possible, right? Right. Best not to think too hard about it. Soon enough, the room is full of the floating bubbles. Am I gonna die by bubbles? The cat releases a final tiny bubble before yawning and laying down right there on the counter. Okay. 
Well, glad you enjoyed it. The bubbles haven't left the room or popped. They seem to be pretty resilient. <laughs> Wait, what? What's that? As one of the bubbles floats closer to you, you see that there's actually something inside it. A tiny furry fish? This is just getting weirder and weirder. Still, you can't help but marvel at the impossible wonder in front of you. You extend a finger toward a bubble. Carefully press it against the surface. Oh, the little fish inside lashes out, viciously sinking its tiny fangs into your finger. It doesn't really hurt that much at first, but then... Uh-oh. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Pain starts to climb from your finger to the rest of your hand, past your wrist. Could it be some kind of venom? <laughs> you fling your arm around and attempt to dislodge the fish, but... Gah! You accidentally knock your arm into several of the bubbles floating around. More tiny venomous fish lash onto your flesh. Okay, I feel like every time I get an ending, it's just more unique and interesting than the last. Getting killed by furry fish in bubbles was not on my <laughs> game bingo card. You stumble back out of pain and a sudden bout of dizziness, only to bump into more bubbles. More fish digging their teeth into your back. Ugh, it hurts. You're getting dizzy. You've got to get out. You deliriously try to stumble out of the kitchen, but the entire room is filled with deadly, deadly bubbles. By the time you collapse to the ground, you're absolutely covered in tiny, angry, biting fish. Your legs, your torso, your arms, your face. The pain is unbearable. You can feel it in your skin, in your teeth, in your eyes, your hair, and, and it's so consuming you can't even feel yourself convulsing or crying. You don't black out. Your eyes are still rolled, rolling up into your skull when you grasp your last breath. Ending a fish out of water. I can't do anything right. Oh god, what happens if I choose the meatloaf? I need to know now. You warm up the meatloaf in the microwave. You place the now warm meatloaf on a saucer next to the cat on the counter. The cat looks like it finds the meatloaf. Interesting. Works for you. Eat up, kitty. As the cat digs into its meal, you go about searching for some bread for your tuna sandwich. You're so distracted by the, your search that you only just barely hear... You turn around and see that the meatloaf has only one, maybe two bites taken out of it. But more alarmingly, there seems to be a red trail of something leading away from where the cat has been sitting and off the edge of the counter towards the living room. Oh, that can't be good. You jump at the strange sound coming from around the corner, further into your apartment. Taking a breath, you walk around the corner to head into the living room. Splat. You stepped in something warm and wet and red. You resist the urge to vomit and step away from the trail of... You follow the trail into the living room and see that it leads into the hall. It's getting louder. It's definitely in the hall. Your body shakes as you feel yourself step forward. You peek around the corner. Nothing. There's nothing there. What? You walk further into the hall and see that the trail leads all the way down to the end of it. There's nothing there. You don't quite feel relief, but at least... Plop. You feel something wet and warm drip onto your cheek. Something very warm. You swipe your shaking hand across it and pull it back to see your... Fingers covered in something. Uh, look up and see what only can be described as meat. The entire ceiling of the hallway is covered in a thick, writhing layer of pulsing meat. At its center is a single glowing eyeball, frantically rolling around in every direction until it lands squarely on you. Ah, bah, bah. <laughs> You try to take a step back, desperate, to escape the hallway. To escape this thing, but... Oh, no. Before you can even scream, meaty tendrils shoot out and grab you. No! Let me go! They pull you up and up into a pair of slowly opening jaws. And then... I died. Yep. <laughs> I'm just collecting all the endings. Oh my god, look how many there are! Well, there's only one other option. Mystery food. Is this really a good idea? No, but nothing else is either, so... <laughs> ah, fine, I guess if this is what you want, you open the container and... Ugh. You just barely manage to keep throwing up, but just barely. The stench is overwhelming. I'm gonna kill this cat. Like, not knowing that this cat is a demon. I'm gonna kill this cat if I give it this toxic sludge that I just found in my fridge. You hazard a look at the contents of the container, but you honestly can't understand what you're supposed to be looking at. Everything is just mashed together. What exactly everything consists of is a mystery you're more than happy to keep unsolved. Am I supposed to warm it up or? <laughs> you decide against putting this crap in your microwave. You doubt it would taste or smell any better warm. Not wanting to hold it anymore, you shake your head and practically toss the container next to the cat on the counter. 
The cat enthusiastically dives for the toxic looking sludge, sniffing it as if savoring the scent. You're about to head to the bathroom to wash your hands for the next hour or so when... Oh god, what'd it do? <laughs> what did this damn cat do? A sharp pain on your foot causes you to stumble. You catch yourself on the kitchen sink and look down to see that the tip of your sock is... Did it bite its... Did it, did it bite my toe off? And the red is still slowly spreading to the rest of your sock. Am I bleeding? You quickly reach down and pull off the sock to see the damage. The freaking cat. Your middle toe is gone. It's just gone. 911. You have to call 911. But phone, where's the... <coughs> what? Your tongue is... What? What? What's happening to me? You slowly look over to find the cat is still eating. Completely unbothered by your suffering. <laughs> Sounds about right for a cat. Not bothering to try and stop the blood from dribbling out of your mouth. You keep watching in a daze as the cat happily chews at its gross pieces of... Wait, that's... You look more closely at the mystery food in the cat's jaws. It looks vaguely familiar. It looks like... A tongue? Oh my god, pieces of me are going into this mystery sludge. Before you can even think to do anything to stop it, the cat dives into the container again and bites into a piece that looks kind of like a... Ah! You collapse to the floor, clutching your torso. You writhe around on the tiles, crying. Something inside you just... Whatever that was felt important. Oh god, and now it's probably gone too. It hurts. It hurts so much. You weakly try to reach up to the cat on the counter above you. Your vision blurs from the effort, from the pain, from your tears, from... Uh... Your eyes. You fall limply back to the floor. Your foot, your mouth, your insides, your eyes. You can feel your life fading away too. That's fine. If it means not feeling the pain of losing another part of you then... Hopefully the cat will take its time eating your eyes and give you time to just... Ending 10, you are what you eat. Oh my god. Just when I keep thinking it's not gonna get more traumatic, it does. It just keeps getting more traumatic. Okay, we did... Oh, the only one we didn't do was play with the cat. Poor thing. It was probably bored stiff sitting in that old box all day, just watching crowds of people walking by, ignoring him. Oh, you just want some attention, don't you? You just want to play. What to play, though? Oh, more decisions. A laser pointer, that sounds good. Cats are curious creatures by nature. They're also natural hunters, sort of. Why not pass the time by letting the cat hunt after something it'll never quite understand? <laughs> so you dig out your old laser pointer from your long gone dreaded days of group presentations in school. You flip it on and see that even after all this time, the batteries still work. You get a little kick out of aiming it at a mirror hanging in the living room so it reflects off the glass, making a little red dot appear on your knee. Oh no. My knee's gonna be gone. The cat cautiously walks over, stopping every few steps to cast a look of suspicion at you. When it finally reaches you, it lightly presses a paw to your knee, like it's trying to catch the dot of red light as casually as possible. <laughs> you move the light a little higher above your knee. The cat reacts immediately, trying to pin the light down. But in the next second, you've already moved it to the floor. The cat jerkily follows, attempting a more energetic pounce when you shift the red dot. Over there, over there, and over there, by the couch. Oh, on the couch. It's been a while since you've laughed this much. You're laughing so much, in fact, that you accidentally shift the red dot onto a lamp beside the couch. In its haste to get the light, the cat leaps onto the lamp, sending them both to the ground. Uh-oh. Oh my gosh! Oh, the cat's mad. <laughs> the cat is sitting in the middle of the former lamp's broken shards, back hunched, its head whipping around back and forth as if it's in panic. You quickly turn off the laser pointer and rush over. I'm so sorry, are you okay? Are you hurt? You reach down to pick up the cat and check for any injuries when- Yeah, I had that coming. Ow, hey! The cat swipes at you, claws extended. It backs up and twitches away, making frantic half-turns in various directions as if looking for something, or waiting for something to appear. Oh, jeez, that really hurt, you know? You hold the hand with the scratch close to your chest. It's bleeding, but it's not too big. You're more annoyed than anything, but... Immediately, your annoyance starts to turn into concern. You watch in shock as the cat starts to run around, tearing at the carpet, the sofa, your armchair. Oh god, it's going crazy! You want to stop it, but you're afraid of getting in the middle of its rampage. You consider calling a vet for advice on how to calm it down, but for some reason... You feel like that wouldn't be a good idea. What happened to you? Is it an idea comes to you, or rather a realization? You grasp the laser pointer, aiming it safely away toward the floor in the middle of the living room. Thinking. Hoping. But the cat would calm down if it found what it was looking for. You turn on the laser pointer. The cat's reaction is immediate.
Uh-oh. He screwed up. In the span of mere seconds, you watch as the cat spies the red dot from its perch on the shredded armchair. Leaps high into the air. Oh, changes in the air. And slams down upon the dot on the floor with a weight and force that shakes the whole apartment. Maybe even the whole building. The cat has somehow grown in size. Eyes bulging and glowing. Tail thrashing. Teeth enlarged, bared and covered alarmingly in a bubbled froth. Its giant claws rip and shred through the carpet, through the floor, tiles, and even below them. Ravenously trying to get at the red dot. Your hands are shaking. You don't know what to do. You feel trapped. You have to get away. Get it away from you. So they back up toward the door. The light moves with you. Instinctively, you flick the light away. This way and that, the cat's stampeding after it, smashing through the TV, breaking the couch in, the, in half, bulldozing through the wall into the hallway. A chance! You turn, intending to bolt out the door and never come back. But in your haste, you forgot something. You forgot several somethings. You forgot the laser pointer, gripped like a lifeline in your hand. You forgot the mirror, still miraculously hanging on the wall next to the hallway, the laser reflecting off of it, putting a small glowing red dot on the back of your head. And as you reach the door, you forgot that it's locked. Yeah, I'm dead. You don't even have the chance to turn around before the cat lunges all the way across the room at you. Yep, sounds about right. You're torn to shreds before you can even blink. And you're 12. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Do something alone. I went all the way back to that option. No, don't take a nap. So these are my only two options. I just have to find the right one in all of these. Clean? You decide that even if it's your day off, that doesn't mean you should be completely unproductive. So for now, you get dressed, roll up your sleeves, and get to work on cleaning the apartment. At least you try to. You notice that no matter how much you clean up, you keep finding more messes than when you started. You peek over at the cat. Oh, he's sleeping. You suspect that it might be the culprit behind the mystery. But every time you rush to check on it, or catch it in the act, you always find it napping in the living room. You keep cleaning, but the cat or something keeps leaving more and more mess in its wake. Keep, keep cleaning. Forever. You keep cleaning, but there's just more mess and more and more. You finally stop and look around you. You don't even recognize your home anymore. There's piles of junk everywhere. Do you even own this much stuff? The stench of garbage is overwhelming, despite your hands feeling raw from all the cleaning fluid you've used. Your eyes still burn from the bleach. You need some air. You need to get out of here. Oh, I'm starting to go crazy. You hear a crash and see a teacup you're certain you don't own smash on the floor. What's it doing? You look up and see the cat perched on a teethering pile of china and kitchen appliances. It carefully nudges another teacup from the pile, sending it careening to the ground. But you don't even flinch as it shatters. Instead, you start to chuckle. Hehehehe. <laughs> Suddenly you're laughing. It's so hilarious. Yeah, I'm going crazy. Ah, that's... <laughs> that tears start running down your face. I knew it was you. You did this, didn't you? You pick up the largest piece of ceramic from the broken teacups, didn't you, and throw it at the cat. The cat dodges by leaking, leaping off the pile. Uh-oh, the pile sways. I'm about to be crushed. It's falling. Of course it is. It's falling toward you. Crash. You can't move. You're buried. The pile fell on top of you. Broken shards of fine china and sharp utensils are piercing your skin. Great! With the last of your strength, you listen as the cat pads over to you before laying down and purring sleepily. This freaking cat. This freaking cat. A nap sounds pretty good. Ending one? And not to- What? <laughs> we went back and got ending one? I can't do anything right in this game. I can't make any right decision in this game. They all end to death in pain and misery. <laughs> Ooh, except for the first decision I was supposed to make. What happens if I- Never took the cat home. Do not take it home. I don't want to take it home. Do not take the cat home. Sadly, as cute as this cat is, you'd never take this thing home with you. Oh, what? You just can't take it home with you. You're a responsible adult. Don't trick me with your cute evil re cat. <laughs> with rent and bills to pay for, not to mention you need to buy food to survive too. There's no way you could care for a cat long term, right? You could barely afford this little outing on your day off. What to do? Oh! <laughs> uh, I guess just leave cat, right? Leave cat. You don't think it's a good idea to get the cat's hopes up of having someone look after it if you're not willing to commit. What if it gets attached and somehow tracks you back down to your home? Oh, I don't know what it just said. Let me know in the comments what it just said. Sorry, see you around, I guess. You stand up, the cat watching your every move. You make it halfway out the alley when the cat meows almost pitifully at you. 
Oh, it's sad. Even though it's killed me multiple times in this game, I still feel bad for it. Just ignore it. Just ignore it. Just ignore it. No, no. You need to nip this in the butt. Get on with your day. It's what's best for both of you. Somebody else will find you and have to deal with you. You leave the alley and continue on your way. Wait, what was I doing? In all the excitement of dealing with your furry dilemma, you'd forgotten that you still haven't decided on what you were going to do for your day off. Oh, God. I don't want to make more... Yeah, let's go to the dog park. Keep the cats away. You decide to take a stroll in the park or something. The only one within walking distance is the nearby dog park. You think it'll make you feel better. First, you get to see a cute cat today. Now you're going to get to see a cute dog. Several of them, in fact. The park is bustling with owners and their canine companions. Playing frisbee, fetch, running, jumping, even napping. Such cuties. Whatever. Like you'd want anything to do with these mangy mutts. What's wrong? Oh, it must be my head. The cat is in my head. The dogs are all so adorable. You want to pet every single one you come across. Oh, bring them home. You stop at the smallest, cutest puppy you've ever seen scampers up to you, blocking your path. Oh my God. Kick the puppy, kill the puppy, eat the puppy, pick up the puppy. The cat is still infected my brain. There's no escaping the cat. Pick, pick, pick up the puppy, pick up the puppy. You pick up the puppy and... Why is there a countdown? Why is there a countdown? Terrified. Oh! Oh no! After throwing it from you, you immediately feel horrible, wincing and guilt as the tiny yelp it releases upon hitting the ground. The owner shoves you aside with a cutting glare and storms away with their puppy. I'm sorry! You call out, but they don't turn back or respond. Not that you expected them to. You deserved it. You're not feeling so great about being at the park at the moment. Should you leave? No, let's stay. <laughs> you stay at the park. You try to calm down by watching all the dogs from afar as you walk along the path, but every so often, one will run up to you. Oh! And when they do, they look... wrong. Their owners don't seem to notice. You find a bench and sit down for a quick break, closing your eyes. Maybe this wasn't the best idea after all. Maybe... Oh god, it's the cat. You should have stayed with me instead. You've broken out of your thoughts when something lands gently on your lap. You look down and see a frisbee on your thighs. Hey, sorry about that. Can you throw that back? You look up to see an owner waving at you in the distance. But more importantly, bark, bark, bark. Oh, 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 it's coming. Oh, hi, dog. A series of excited barks jerk your gaze forward and you see a large dog sprinting toward you. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm going crazy. Ah! A series of excited barks jerks your gaze forward and you see a large dog sprinting toward you. Hey, hurry, hurry and throw it back! Ah, the face! Ah, I, I, I can't. The dog suddenly bounds at you, angry, furious. It tears the limbs from your body. Was that real? You're not feeling so great. Maybe, maybe you should leave. I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna stay. Uh, throw, throw. I threw it. I threw the frisbee this time. Oh, the dog looks up at you, eager for its reward of pets and pats for catching the frisbee. Should I? I want to pet pet the dog. Let me pet the dog. Please let me pet the dog. Really? Are you sure? I'm warning you. Do not touch that butt. Or you will regret it. I'm gonna pet the dog. I got my fingers taken off. I got my hand taken off to pet animals. You think this is gonna stop me? You reach out your hand. Oh, I want to pet the dog. Oh, you pet the dog. The dog seems pleased. You don't feel well. Suddenly, the sky begins to darken rapidly. Oh, no. You look up along with all the pet owners to see that the sun has been eclipsed by the moon in a blink of an eye. You vaguely remember that you should never look directly at an eclipse, but for some reason you don't look away. A loud piercing yowl fills the air, shaking the ground beneath you. You instinctively move to lift your hands in order to shield your ears, but... Oh no. But the hand that has been cautiously pressing upon the dog's head comes away with some resistance. Resistance like sticky slime almost cementing your hand on the dog's head. The slime stretches on your movement. The dog's head stretches with it, too, as the canine begins to just melt. It melts. The dog's melting! Puppy! Until it becomes a pile of goo at your feet. You dazedly looked around for the dog's owner, only to find an empty pile of familiar clothes where they once stood. You see similar piles of clothes next to the piles of goo scattered all around the park. All the dogs and their owners. The melted goo of the dog in front of you that then starts to move with a shudder. It slithers across the grass toward the field in the center of the park. All the other piles of goo following after it. They mix and meld together into a single entity that shifts and undilates and bulges and grows. You watch in dazed horror as it then fills out and shapes itself into a behemoth of a dog, snarling and frothing at the mouth, red eyes frantic and searching, before the growling orbs land directly on you. 
The rumbling growl it emits is so low and deep, you can feel the sound of its crash into you. Um, yeah, I'll leave the park. No, you had your chance. Better start running. <laughs> Try to run. But you're not fast enough. The behemoth barely takes a few leaps before it already towering over you. It tears you apart until there's nothing left. Ending 21. Dog person. I tried taking the cat home. I tried not taking the cat home. I don't know what to do. <laughs> if you want me to continue the madness, then leave a like. But I, that's where I'm leaving it. Because I just don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I'm trapped in an endless hellscape. Psych time loop cycle. From this freaking cat. This freaking evil cat.